So <clears throat> the way you just referred to the movement a couple minutes ago was not the Vermont Secession Movement, but the Vermont Independence Movement. And there's a fine line between those words. And a lot of people talk very openly about Vermont independence um, without referring to secession. And that's something that Vermonters really pride themselves on is their independence, um, both in a more like old-fashioned Vermont way, but even then the newer folks that have come into Vermont and definitely ch changed the political landscape considerably still uh, view favorably Vermont independence when it comes to local economy, the local boar eating movement, the Progressive Party. You know, be one f the Progressive Party is the, mo is the largest uh, political third party in the United States when it comes to elected officials. Um, and it'd be one thing if uh, their platform had to do with very imperialistic, you know, loyal to the federal government uh, perspectives, but it's, it's quite the opposite. They have no intention of expanding their um, party beyond Vermont's borders. They're all, you know, many of them, uh, you know, run organic farms and um, are very much into the uh, local economy uh, movements and initiatives in Vermont. Um, so there are many uh, dynamics in the state that favor independence and uh, local living. Um, where do you see uh, a lot of those people sort of that who favor independence and then making the connection that what they're in fact doing is separating themselves from the federal government and then taking it one step further to uh, actually uh, cutting ties politically as well? You've actually, uh, Merrick, kind of gotten to the heart of the biggest challenge we face in our movement because uh, the biggest challenge we, we encounter is actually the progressive movement in, in Vermont led the spiritual and political leader of which is Bernie Sanders. And uh, you're right that, that most of these people are into uh, simple living, s smaller is uh, be beautiful, back to the land, uh, energy independence, uh, 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 locally produced uh, uh, agriculture, small businesses, uh, all of these good things that we, uh, we applaud. Uh, but uh, with few exceptions, they're also um, loyal to the American empire. The, the American empire of which uh, uh, Bernie Sanders is their principal spokesman. And uh, part of the problem is that uh, most of the progressives, their view of the world is that uh, only the federal government can possibly solve all of our problems, failing to realize that the federal government is the problem because it's owned and operated and controlled by Wall Street and corporate America, that there really is no distinction between the empire and, and, and corporate America. They're really one and the same. And, and, and so, these people who on the one hand are advocating small is beautiful, back to the land, which is very appealing, they're simultaneously in bed with the most powerful, uh, the most materialistic, the wealthiest, uh, the, most, uh, the, the most racist, uh, the most militaristic and most violent empire of all times. And so there's this huge par paradox but it's like Vermont progressives don't get it. You really can't have it both ways, in which you claim to be into small is beautiful, but you are an apologist and you are a supporter of the empire. And that's, that's the rub of what we are against in this, this state, that these people haven't been able to figure this out. All right, well, I think that is a great transition to a uh, short video that we do want to show. Um, speaking of Bernie Sanders and speaking of federal issues, um, one that has been uh, in the limelight quite a bit is the Federal Reserve with Obama wanting to extend more powers uh, for the Federal Reserve to be able to regulate systemic risk, quote unquote, whatever that means. Um, so this is, uh, Bernie Sanders does have a bill in the Senate called the Federal Reserve Sunshine Act, and this is Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina introducing that bill to be an amendment to a uh, appropriations bill going through the Senate and uh, the problems that he's running into with the House Democrats. Um, I have another amendment. Um, I have been informed by the, that the majority plans to block consideration of uh, this amendment, which is number 1367, regarding the transparency at the Federal Reserve. I would none, nonetheless like to take a few moments to discuss it. If 
If that is uh, without objection. With them. Thank you. The Federal Reserve, the unele unelected central bank of the United States, enjoys a monopoly over the flow of our money and credit, but has never been completely transparent and accountable to Congress since its creation in 1913. Since 1913, our dollar has lost more than 95 percent of its purchasing power. My amendment is called the Federal Reserve Sunshine Amendment, and it is modeled after legislation sponsored by Representative Ron Paul of Texas in the House and our colleague Senator Sanders of Vermont here in the Senate. This amendment amends Section 714 of Title 31 of the U.S. Code to remove existing restrictions on how the Government Accounting Office can audit the Federal Reserve. With these limitations gone, the Fed's discount window operation, funding facilities, open market operations, and agreements with foreign central banks and governments would all be finally open to congressional oversight. The Government Accounting Office would be required to audit the Fed by the end of 2010 and to report its findings to Congress. Every dollar created by the Fed has an effect on the value of the dollars in our pockets and bank accounts. We need to pay more attention to the effect of Washington decisions, whether fiscal policy made by Congress or monetary policy made by the Fed. They all are ultimately borne by the American people. The Federal Reserve will create and disperse trillions of dollars in response to our current financial crisis. Americans across the nation, regardless of their opinion on the bailout, want to know where the money has gone, exactly how much has been spent, and what collateral has been taken in return. That is why you see so much bipartisan support in the House in Bernie Sanders and Jim DeMint being on the same side in the Senate. Inflation is a hidden tax, and we unfortunately forget about it too often when we are debating spending bills here in Congress. Our fiscal actions, higher deficits, increased long-term debt, entitlement obligations will necessarily need to be paid for by printing new money or borrowing more money from an increasingly skeptical world. Either option results in higher interest rates for consumers in a devaluing of the dollars they have already earned and saved. Allowing the Fed to operate our nation's monetary system in almost complete secrecy leads to abuse, inflation, and a lower quality of life for every American. Unfortunately, the majority has decided to use a procedural tactic to block a vote on this amendment by invoking something called Rule 16. This is a rule that prevents policy being added to spending bills. The majority claims that we do not legislate on appropriation bills. Of course, that is false. In fact, there are already Rule 16 violations in the bill we're trying to amend. We also saw this majority airdrop the Cash for Clunkers program into the recent supplemental appropriation bill. The majority may claim that this amendment is not relevant to the underlying bill, but in fact, there are already provisions in this bill related to the Government Accounting Office audits. So this language is quite appropriate on this bill. The legislation has already received the support of more than one half of the House of Representatives within a few short months of its introduction. It's time for the Senate to show its support. Mr. President, I would like to ask the Majority Leader uh, again to allow a vote on Amendment 1367 regarding a GAO audit of the Federal Reserve. 